Of, hey, we touched on the Undertaker. Let's talk about him for a second because you come, you know, El Paso, you're in Houston. Of course, Taker's a Houston guy. You're in WWE. Taker's being, you know, whatever, you know, he, he was in WCW. I wrestled with him one time in USWA. I think he was in the business about two years ahead of me. And WCW, WCW didn't know what the hell to do with him. He goes to WWF, and all of a sudden, man, that dude debuts as The Undertaker, and it was really a lights-out scary gimmick. And you were actually his first manager. Yep. Well, how I was that? How did that all happen? You. Did you know Mark prior to his WWF days? I did not, but I watched, I watched him in World Class, um, and I was always a big fan of Don Jardine, the spoiler. Right. And Mark would walk the ropes. Right. Like Don Jardine did. And I thought, wow, that big son of a bitch is an agile guy. And I just became a fan of his, really. Yeah. And Paul Heyman called me, and Paul was managing him in WCW. And Paul said, hey, man, he goes, this, this guy, uh, mean Mark, hell of a talent, hell of a guy. You guys, he would really do good up there, and he's really unhappy down here. And I thought, oh, shit, you know, I watched him from – when he broke in, in in Dallas and everything. and I always thought that Don Jardine had trained him, but right. that wasn't the case, you know. And, and so we talked a little bit, and I talked to to Vince about him, and, and Vince just looked at him and thought he was a big, tall, red-headed basketball player. Mm. And then, you know, didn't see a whole lot in him. He wanted Sid. He wanted, you know, Sid at the time. Right, right. You know, Vince gets his you know, mindset on something. You know, that's yeah. what he wants. And so Mark had come up, and uh, they had a show in the Meadowlands, and, and he, I just begged Vince. I said, would you please just meet this guy? I said, I don't know him from Adam. I've talked to him. He seems like a real nice guy. I said, but he's, he's a hell of a talent. I mean, you can watch his stuff and everything. And, and he's a big, bastard, unique look and, you know. Let, let's meet him. At least, you know, he, he fit the size profile. Right. You know, big bastard, right? Right. And, and it was uh, a big man territory back then. I mean, you know, I mean, it was it was great to be a big guy. Yeah. It always is in the pro wrestling business. Okay, so this meeting's going to go down. So, but I had the idea of I wanted a really dark, evil character to manage. And I was like, you know, hey, put him with me. Because I didn't know if he could talk or not. He always had a manager. Right. And I said, you know, and Heyman was, and Heyman had even said, he goes, you know, I don't know how his promos are or anything like that. I said, oh, perfect, man. <laughs> Give me somebody that can't talk. <laughs> yeah. you know? So I pitched this really dark character to be the black to my white. And, but long story short, man, Vince met him. And, you know, as you know, Mark, he, he's just a class guy and a, a good guy. And I think Vince saw that right away and loved the idea. And came up with Undertaker, and shit, the rest is history, man. So who came up with the Undertaker gimmick? I want to say that was probably Vince, because I was like, you know, I wanted this black. Um, I came up with the name, Kane. Right. Because it was the first man to ever commit murder, like Cain and Abel. Right. And so I'd come up with the name Kane, and, and then Vince was like, oh, God damn, we're going to make him look like an old-time Undertaker, and we'll call him Kane the Undertaker. Strong name. And uh, we eventually just dropped Kane and uh, went with The Undertaker, man. But he he was one of those guys, when he walked out, uh, he's another one. Oh, Brother, yeah. When he's out there, he's Undertaker. Yeah. Mark don't exist. There. But when he walked out that first time, God, he was electric. Dude, when, it, when he first started, I mean, it was really a scary gimmick. And, of course, you know, everybody was selling like a sandwich for him. But there, you go back and you get on YouTube and you watch those kids' faces on those first few rows. They're horrified. They're scared shitless for a shoot. Hell yeah! Oh, okay. The true story. You talk about that for a shoot, man. Me and Mark, we're leaving Chattanooga. We're going to drive to Atlanta. All right. So we get done. Don't have time to uh, take a shower or anything, so we take a horse bath, you know, just kind of wash our faces, and as quick as we can, we run out into the car. Mark's driving. So his face is, like, just pale white. Right. He's still got, like, the dark circles under his eyes yeah. and everything. You know, he wore the purple makeup and shit. Yeah. I've got my face, you know, it's, like, red, <laughs> you know. But <laughs> I've done the best I can to clean it off. I'm in a sweatshirt and everything, and he's he's got his uh, his coat on, his black Black overcoat. 
we run out of the arena and we're like hauling ass through Chattanooga. Well, we get lost. <laughs> and we're in a part of town that we really don't belong in. Okay? Yeah. yeah. And so we pull into this gas station and all, and uh, Mark's got his, his seat way back, okay, because he's a big, tall son of a bitch. So he's got his seat back, and it's leaned all the way back. And so he pulls up, and I roll the window down. I go, hey, man, excuse me, can you tell us how to get the whatever, this, this highway to <laughs> we're, we're heading to Atlanta? And so this guy comes walking over to the car, and he's sauntering real slow, and he's grabbing his crotchal area and everything. And he's like, well, man, what you going to do for me? And, hey, man, what y'all got in there? And uh, how about y'all maybe? Uh, and he stops in his tracks mid-sentence. <laughs> Mark literally does the Undertaker sit-up. Yeah. And turns and looks at this guy, and the guy started backpedaling and almost <laughs> fell down. He goes, man, what the fuck is that? Man, that dude looks like he just killed somebody. Hey, hey, no, listen, man, y'all need to go right down here. You're going to go down about two blocks. You're going to turn right. You're going to go up to the next light. You're going to turn left. That's going to put you right on the highway, man. Y'all get the fuck out of here. True story. <laughs> and it was so goddamn funny <laughs> because he had seen a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> that man did the sit up and snapped the head. And looked at him and had that white face and those dark ass eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he thought, oh, my God, this son of a bitch, these motherfuckers just killed somebody. And now they're just trying to get out of the hood. Man, I can't remember if I told this story in a long time or not. I've told it before, but one time I just came in at WWF. I was starting, I might have still been the ringmaster. Maybe I was stone cold. And we were, no, nah, maybe I was stone cold. Some town, don't remember what it was. The house was mediocre. The business was what it was. And I was going to work with Taker. And, of course, I knew Mark a little bit. I mean, a tiny bit from USWA days. And so, anyway, we're going to work. He's the undertaker. All of a sudden, I'm already in the ring. The lights go down. The lighters come up. Bong, that music hits. And here comes Undertaker in slow motion, just doing that fucking slow walk he always yeah. did. So, you know, before the match, I'm, I'm always kind of thinking about some stuff that I might want to do. You know, a fishbone of events. Yeah, man, big guy. I'll, maybe I'll take him down, work his leg. Man, all of a sudden, here comes the Undertaker. He's getting closer and closer. It, that His entrance was so overwhelming I forgot every goddamn thing I wanted to do with Mark in that match. That's a shoot. I didn't oh, know yeah. whether to shit or wind my watch. The lights come on. He takes his shit off. They ring the bell, and we had a modified clusterfuck right then and there. Uh, but it was great, man, watching him come out, and it's like, bong. It was fucking strange. It was, I hate to use the word surreal. It was surreal. Yeah, it was. It was just downright spooky. And he never broke character. One time, I bu I made him break character. One time, we was over on Kuwait, and man, it was like a, it was like a soul show. We went over there. We was in the same building like five nights in a row. One of those rich cats had bought the shows. We flew over there, bust us in. You know, the houses were you know it was a bought show. The houses were about you know a third to, to half full, and we did a battle roll or something like that. We spilled out on the floor. And I'd been selling on the apron. I had a little bit of heat, you know, going as Stone Cold Steve Austin. And the Undertaker picked me up. You know, he straightened my head up. out. We were both standing outside the ring. And he looked at me with that damn look. And I just popped. For some reason, I started laughing. And he actually started, he laughed too for about a cut hair of a second. And then went right back into character and he flipped his hair back. He had that long hair and he flipped it over his face so he couldn't see him laughing. But I actually busted The Undertaker out of character one time. But I think it's the only time in the existence of that character that that's happened. Those are few and far between. That some bitch don't break.